Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Frankly Speaking Baseball on WWBG 1470 AM, also on WTOB 980 AM 96.7 FM, as well as TobaccoRoadSportsRadio.com, all social media platforms we're streaming on, and let's not forget, let's talk sports network as well well ladies and gentlemen we've been talking major league baseball major league baseball and more major league baseball have the all-star game coming up uh what a couple days away here last series before the all-star break and when we talk about teams that have been playing i don't know if over the head is the right word it might be the right word but has been playing much better than we first anticipated when the season started one of those teams are the Miami Marlins. And we'd like to go ahead and bring in play play broadcaster of the Miami Marlins radio network. Let's bring in Kyle Sneloff. Kyle, how you doing? I'm doing great. So thanks so much for having me on. This is awesome. Kyle, first of all, thank you so much for coming. I know you've been real, real busy, but when you look at this Miami Marlins team, last year at the All-Star break, I believe if I was correct, there was something like um, I believe 43 and 49, they were under 500, not a lot of excitement in the Miami area, but let's turn the clocks, you know, a year ahead, already have more wins than we did last year at the All-Star break. Talk about this Miami Marlins team, and in your opinion, you're with the team all the time, what has been the major difference uh, these past, you know, couple of months? Than the last couple of months of last year? Yeah, so I think it's a really good question. And I think the first place that you have to start is with Marlins first year manager, Skip Schumacher. Um, guys have taken to his mess. I tell people all the time when they ask me about Skip, this is my 11th season now with the Miami Marlins organization. I go back to the first couple of years that I was working with the team. We trained with the St. Louis Cardinals in Jupiter during spring training. And I always marveled at the way that they would conduct and go about their business, whether it's the end of February and through the month of March. I would say within 24 to 48 hours of spring training starting this season, to me it looked like Cardinals were in Marlins jerseys. And that is because of Skip Schumacher and his no-nonsense approach and business-like approach to the game. He lets these guys have a lot of fun. But there's an expectation that every single time that you take the field, that you're going to put your best foot forward to win a baseball game, that we're not going to be out there bobbling the baseball and looking like the bad news bears. There was a culture, is what I'm trying to say, that was set from the beginning of spring training, and I think guys have really taken to that. Now, additionally, Kim Ang deserves a lot of credit for some of the moves that she made this offseason. A couple of guys that immediately come to mind that might be just unsung heroes for this ball club this season would be Gene Segura and Yuli Gurriel. They have been inspirational. They have inspired these guys in the clubhouse, and they've got them believing that they can do something special this season. Two guys know what it's like to play in the World Series. Gene Segura was actually the longest tenured player in Major League Baseball in 2022 who had never been to the postseason. And obviously he goes on that incredible run with the Philadelphia Phillies. And Yuli Gurriel, a couple of years removed from a World Series and a batting champion, has really sent a message inside of the clubhouse that we can win this season. So it starts with the manager. Skip has done a terrific job. There have been some terrific veterans in the clubhouse. Now, you talk about the nitty-gritty of baseball. If you look at the Marlins this season, there's not a whole lot that's going to blow you away if you just take a look at what they do on paper. But what they have done is that they found a way to get a big hit every single night. They have over 20 come-from-behind victories this season, and they've got over 21 run wins. They are comfortable playing in close games. They've been able to shorten baseball games because the bullpen has been so good. And the starting pitching is some of the best in Major League Baseball. So when you put all of that together, it stands the reason, and it doesn't seem like it's a fluke that this game is 10 games over 500 as we approach the All-Star break. They're a really good team. I know that's hard for people to grasp <laughs> right now, but it's not a fluke when you're playing this well in July. 
You know, let's talk about the bullpen because I agree with you. You know, I tell people when I observe this team and I watch this team night after night because I get the tickets, I can watch all the games, obviously. But when you look at this team, I agree with you 100%. It's not the same guy every night, but they're not necessarily hitting by average. I mean, nothing attractive, even down and up the statistics, nothing just drives you nuts. And then you look at this team and they're winning because they're doing it as a team. And that bullpen, I'll tell you what, I saw again the other night, um, what is his name, A.J. Punk, uh, Apunk, uh come in, uh, settle down. I believe it was St. Louis they were playing. Talk about this bullpen. Talk about these kids. I mean, you mentioned uh, A.J. Punk we just mentioned, but you got uh, Andrew Naughty who's 6-1 and one in that bullpen Um Stephen Okert, I think you got Shawgoy in there as well. Talk about this bullpen and how much it has meant to this team who relies on the timely hit. Oh, yeah. The bullpen's been great. I mean, it's not often that you can talk about teams that can shorten games and essentially play seven inning games, but that's the situation because the Marlins bullpen has been so good. I'm not sure if there's currently a team in baseball. There was a couple of weeks ago. I believe the Marlins are currently the only team in the league that's got four lefties in the bullpen with Okert, Nardi, Puck, and Scott. And from the right side, Brazo Bond's been good. JT yep. Shagwan, Floral have been very good as well. I mean, you feel pretty darn good if you're managing a game and you can just stick one of those horses out there in the eighth and ninth inning and you, you feel like even with a one-run lead that it, it's safe. You know, one-run leads in baseball – will put you on the edge of your seat and buckle that seatbelt a little bit. But the Marlins have not made you feel that way at all this season. So a lot of the credit goes to the bullpen because they truly have been able to shorten games. If you have a bad bullpen, if your bullpen stinks, you're going to lose a lot of late leads. And the Marlins flat out have not done that in all this season. I mean, if you take a look at some of the stuff um, that they've been able to do this year, they're 39-1 one with Leading after eight innings, they're 34 and four when leading after seven. That's impressive. They're not losing late leads, and they're not losing when they get a big hit late in game. So the bullpen's really been great. Yeah, and they really have been. But you know, you talk about starting pitching. I'm, I'm under the impression. Love to get your feedback on this. Um, don't get me wrong. Yuri Perez has hit. You know, Miami with uh, fierce wins. Let's just say. I mean, I know he had a rough outing, his last outing, but overall, he's been lights out. In my opinion, they he came at the right time. This bullpen, and, and excuse me, this starting pitching was not really consistent. Then Yuri Perez comes in. Obviously, he's been lights out since he's been there. But it, is it safe to say this team definitely needs to get at least one more solid starter at the trade deadline? I mean, I think that's probably fair to say because they are thin there. And what people have to keep in mind is that outside of Sandy Alcantara, Braxton Garrett, Jesus Lazardo, Brian Holy, Gary Perez, Edward Cabrera, none of these guys, including Trevor Rogers, have never pitched a full season in the major leagues. Now, some of those guys, they're going to turn them loose this season, that there are no restrictions, in particular with Braxton Garrett and Jesus Lazardo. But yeah, I mean, I do think it's fair to say that the Marlins really have to scour the market sooner rather than later. You don't know. I mean, if you're going to try to pluck a good starting pitcher away from a bad team, you might have to overpay a little bit. But sometimes that's the price to pay if you're trying to win and get back to the postseason and roll the dice in those short series come October. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say. I mean, they currently have Edward Cabrera, Johnny Cueto, Max Meyer, and Trevor Rogers on the injured list. Right. From the Tommy John surgery, Cueto's uh, really struggled in his minor league outing. So, yeah, I, I do think that they've got to go try to find more starting pitching somewhere because they have been blessed with good health to start the season. You know, you're, you're, you're one little shoulder pinch and three-week absence away from being like, where the heck do we go in this rotation, right? So I think that is very fair to say. Now, you know, I want to talk, how much fun is it day in and day night, day out, you're going in, what, at the, pretty much the halfway mark, as we mentioned, and we're still watching Luis Arias go for 400. I mean, it's crazy. I, 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 
it, it's it's really not supposed to happen the way in which the game is played today. You know, it's 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 built on like one big swing and all these home runs and the analytics departments don't care about strikeouts anymore. Luis Arise is just an absolute throwback player in the yes. year 2023. I mean, the, 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 the dude is unbelievable. And Skip Schumacher says this all the time. He wakes up and hits, you know, and there's that, there's that old adage, but he literally does. Luis Arise has a routine home on the road, whether he's at his house in Miami or in a hotel room on the road, he literally wakes up and hits. I mean, what on earth are we talking about? This guy is unbelievable. He just continues to find a way to get a hit or two every single night. He's obviously knocking on the door of 400. That's not easy to do. But when you're talking about that in the year 2023, it's just something to behold. And, you know, it, you know, we really shouldn't be surprised. Maybe we should be surprised that he's shooting for 400. But this is a guy that was with the Twins that won the American League uh, batting title. So Miami did understand what they were getting in this player. No doubt about it. The Marlins. I, I tell people this and keep in mind all the time. Yuli Gurriel has been unbelievable for the team this year. Tim Mann goes out and she signs Yuli Gurriel, who won the 2022, I'm sorry, the 2021 American League Batting Championship. The Marlins have the 2022 American League Batting Champion. We've got the reigning National League Cy Young Award winner. I always tell people, I say, when you look at some of the accolades that this team has, they've got the 2021 World Series MVP. Don't be too shocked that this team is playing well. I, I think they just get associated with the Marlins, and it's like, well, they haven't been good in 20 years, so they're just not going to be good. Well, look at some of the guys, right? Like, if these guys perform up to expectations, I don't think it should be totally shocking that this team is playing really, really well right now. Yeah, and, you know, you mentioned something real important because you do have a lot of young guys on this team. But I'm very impressed with the um, the veteran presence that they added. Not just that they added, Kyle, but winning veterans. Joey Wendell, who's starting to hit now, played with the Rays, very successful, you know, knows how to win. Arias played with the Twins. He knows how to win. I mean, Soler, I believe, was there in the playoffs. Talk about just these couple of veterans how much it can mean to a young team that's full of excitement and full of energy like the Marlins. Yeah, I would say most importantly, it's off the field. They don't let young guys ride like the emotional highs and lows of a season when you're losing and winning. You know, they really have gotten that to get to a place where it's like, if we win or lose tonight, show up tomorrow, don't ride that emotional high of a great win last night or the emotional low of losing an eighth inning lead. You know, it's, this is a long season. I know you love baseball like everybody else. You know, it's like it's six and a half, seven months of just grinding every single day for 162 games. And the ultimate goal is if you're fortunate enough to play a little bit more in October, you know, when the leaves start turning colors and it's 55 degrees outside. So, yeah, I mean, Veteran leadership, people all, you know, it's funny you say that too, because I had somebody the other day, they tweeted at me, they were like, when are they going to let Gene Segura go and these other guys that aren't performing? I'm like, you, you, you're, you're missing the boat. There's so yep. much more than yep. that. Like, if you're just, okay, fine. All right, you want to get rid of those guys? Go ahead. So where's the veteran leadership coming from when there's a 23-year-old kid that comes up from AAA who's got his eyes as wide as a deer in the headlights and has no idea how to handle himself in the big leagues? Like, there's more to it. You, you can't just cut bait with guys because maybe they're not performing to how you'd like. These guys are integral parts to the, you know, to, to the operation here, and, and they are really what's kind of getting the ship moving in the right direction, and it hasn't really deviated. Yeah, and look, you know, you talk about numbers, too. You, I mean, when you look at Jorge Soler, there can't be a, a lot of upset people right now in the Miami area. Heck no, heck no. And this is a guy that was really disappointed with the way things went. First year of a pretty big deal last year. Um, he's playing like the Marlins expect him to play. And there have been times this season where he has carried the team. And he's hitting big home runs. And the Marlins have hit some homers. You know, they're like bottom third in the league in home runs. But, um, yeah, as it pertains to Jorge Soler, he's been incredible. 
I, I mean, he seems to get a big hit every single night. Doesn't play a lot in the outfield sporadically, but as a designated hitter with 22 home runs at the All Star break, you really can't ask for much more. Yep, and let let me end it with this. Um, as we're about to let uh Kyle go, we're running out of time here. Kyle, it's a two part question, so I'll let you answer it how you want to answer it. But number one, who? What's another young guy? Maybe the fans might not know of in Miami that we should be looking out for balance of the year? And then part B, what do the Marlins have to do to continue this pace so that come October, you and I could be talking about a wild card playoff game? Yeah, it's a really good question. They're a little bit thin in the minor leagues. There's actually a young man that's up here right now. His name is Peyton Myers. He's a really intriguing player. He was actually a terrific two-way player in college at Rice, and then he was drafted by the Tigers, and after the 2019 season, they asked him if he exclusively wanted to just play offense or hit, be a position player, and he had been thinking about it, the answer was yes. The Marlins took him in the 2022, like this past December, the minor league phase of the Rule 5 draft. He was unbelievable in double A, and in about three and a half weeks in AAA, he was hit over 400. Bonds have brought him up because Jazz Jesson Jr. is on the injured list. I'm really curious to see how he performs in the big leagues because every single night in AAA, he was getting a couple hits. Now, to your question about what do the Marlins need to do to kind of continue this, I think do the, exactly what they're doing. Again, they're not they're, 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 on paper, they're not the best team in baseball. But what they have is really good starting pitching a really good bullpen, great veteran leadership, and guys that have that refuse-to-lose mentality. And again, when, when we're talking you know, in the middle of July or, you know, whatever, the first couple of weeks in July here, like it's, it's, it's not a fluke anymore when you're 12, 10, 11 games over 500. It's a pretty good indication that you're capable of winning often. And so, you know, for me, we'll see what the Marlins and Kim Ng do at the deadline. But I don't really think the team, the team has to do a whole lot. You can obviously always try to get better. But this is a team that's going to be in really good shape headed down the home stretch here in 2023. Yeah, I agree with you. We're looking forward to it. And we want to take the time right now to thank you very, very much. Taking time out of your, what I know is a busy schedule for you to join us on Frankly Speaking Baseball this week. All right, Larry, thanks so much for the call. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. All right, that was Kyle Seeliff, play-by-play radio voice of the Miami Marlins. Oh, baby, what an interview. Let's go ahead. Let's take a break. We'll be back 